In this clip, Joe and AJ from The Y Files take a jab at Zahi Hawass, then quickly get into the history of asteroids hitting Earth and the likely chance of it happening again. Check it out. You know, I watched a little of, um, of Zahi Hawass on, on here. That's all you need, just a little. For that <laughs> episode, you get it. I couldn't believe he was, he's still doing it. I mean, uh, I, maybe he was around when they actually built the things. I think that was probably the best advertisement for alternative archaeology you're ever going to get. When you see the guy that's the gatekeeper and how closed-minded he is. He didn't mention the capstones, the, the, the limestone facing from Tor. He didn't even talk about it. Well, also, this just saying it was the national project, and that's how they were able to get 80-ton stones 500 miles away through the mountains on sleds. Like, come on. Zahi Hawass, episode 2321, is a must-watch. Joe has crowned it the worst podcast he has ever done. It was basically everything you would expect a mainstream archaeologist to say for two hours straight. The Aslan stones are from 1,200 miles away. Yeah. You know, the, the tour stones are, uh, I don't know, 20, 30 miles away or whatever they were. How about those Lebanon stones at Baalbek? Baalbek, they can't, I, I, it's, how many tons is that? You, you need a person standing on it to even see the size of it. You've never seen the Baalbek stone if you're listening. The thing is, it's, it's like a skyscraper on its side. Yeah. And it's one solid piece. And it was moved there. Yes. See, pull up the Baalbek stones in Lebanon because there's stuff that's above it that is like of a more recent time period, but it seems to have been put there on top of these older stones that are so big they don't make any sense. Like that's just one of them that was quarried but not moved, but right. the ones that are in place. Go to the ones that like, see... Like these ones, the ones that are above. So they're the lower stones and the ones above. You don't realize how big they are unless you can get a human being to stand next to them. But right. they are preposterously big. Like, there you go. Right. Like, you Fif 15 feet high, 30, 40 feet long. I mean, they're showing in metric, so I'm confused. The official narrative on the Baalbek stones is using a combination of methods, including rollers, sledges, and potentially capstans. The quarry is slightly higher than the temple, so the stones may have been moved downhill, possibly with the aid of temporary earthen ramps. But as you know, this theory is unacceptable by most of the history buffs Joe has on. Incredible. Right. And who? Who did it? And when? When was that done? And then there's like Malta. Like that stuff that they think Malta was con constructed when the sea levels were much lower. So there was a, a way to make a path to there from Italy and from these other places sure. because they found Neanderthal bones there. And, and that, so, allegedly yeah. giants built that. And Darren Kuyu and all the hidden cities mm -hmm. underneath uh, Cappadocia and Turkey that they're finding are connected. Those are nuts. No Those one knows nuts. who made them. No one knows who made them and they can – have thousands of people living underground. They can bring fresh water from the from the aquifers. They can bring fresh air and circulate it. They have defensive mechanisms with these giant stones, and nobody knows how they made them. Yeah, and who? Actually, AJ, there is an official story on how it was built. Daring Kuyu was primarily constructed by the Phrygians around the 8th century BCE. These ancient people carved the 18-story complex into soft volcanic rock for protection from invaders. Later, the city was expanded by early Christians and Byzantines, who added chapels and refined its defensive features, including ventilation shafts and wells, to support up to 20,000 residents during times of siege. And, and why? Yeah. Great Flood. Yeah, that's the theory, right? The theory of the Great Flood and then the Younger Dryas Impact Theory destroyed the atmosphere where there was just like above the earth, which is like chaotic, and they sought refuge underground. I lean more toward that the, the, the ice sheets melted from a solar event than an impact, but it certainly could be either. I mean, Well, it could be a combination of could things be. because it's also, they think there was more than one. The, the impact event happened. They know this based on core samples, iridium, uh, the, the nano diamonds that come from impacts. This and, is the Greenland impact. Yeah, not just Greenland, North America. They think it have. I think they found these, the evidence of this stuff, like 30% of the Earth's surface where the, they believe these things had hit. I think we got bombarded. Right, so that would be like flying through an asteroid field like, mm -hmm. like, the, like the Leonids or the Perseids and mm -hmm. the Taurids. So the remnants of, of some giant object that is rubble and right. we just fly through it. 
which means we fly through it frequently. We I mean, fly through it twice a year. Twice a year. But we don't always, you know, most of the time we get lucky and it's not a really a hot one. But like but what there, happened but with Tunguska? Big, Tunguska, right. That's, that's great. That's 1907. And in the same month that we passed through that comet field. That's right. Yeah. Right, that's over Siberia. And that was an airburst, I believe, because mm-hmm. there's no impact crater. Right. But it flattened like millions of square miles of trees. And it's still fucked to this Sti- day. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. There's images of that if you want to look up that. There's, um, there's actual like film of it. It's crazy. It looks like a, a bomb went off. The Tunguska event was a massive, unexplained explosion that occurred near the Podkamanaya Tunguska River in Siberia on June 30th, 1908. It's believed to have been caused by the airburst of a large meteoroid or comet fragment, though no impact crater or significant meteorite fragments have been found. The blast flattened an estimated 80 million trees over 830 square miles. Yeah, we're in a shooting gallery. You know, Earth is flying through a shooting gallery. There's 900,000 near-Earth objects that are just hovering around out there. And NASA says we track most of them. The... Because <laughs> in those fields with, with the proceeds towards, there are big objects. Mm-hmm. There are Earth killers in there. Oh, yeah. You know, and Apophis is, is lurking. Apophis is the big one. That's due to fly by in a few years. What's that one? That's a, that's a giant asteroid that's... Uh, I think it's due to fly by maybe 2030 something. How big is that one? I, I I'll get it wrong. I mean, I'm going to say a million things wrong today. I'll hear all about it. But it, but it's a it's a planet killer. Like it's a it, it's a civilization ender, and it's going to fly near. Like we're going to be able to see it during the day. 375 meters across, about the size of a cruise liner. It will pass within 32,000 kilometers of Earth's surface on April 13, 2029. Now stop there. That's about, that's closer than the moon. Whoa. That's, I mean, way closer than the moon. Yeah. So that's what, that's 70,000 miles where the moon is... 250? 250 to 300. So we're going to see that. What wow. It, you don't want to see that in, in this, you don't want to look up and see that. Just a little side note on this. Initially, NASA thought there was a small chance of impact in 2029. Could you imagine the chaos if that narrative stayed true? But further observations ruled out that possibility. While it will pass very close to Earth in 2029, it will not hit the planet. Well, just knowing that ones far larger have passed through. Mm -hmm. And then we know for sure a bunch of hit. You know, For sure. You know, Chichen Itza, that one. All right, Chicxulub, but that was yeah. uh, that was pseudoscience until uh, that father son went down there and found it. Mm-hmm. The Chicxulub impactor was a large asteroid or comet that impacted Earth roughly 66 million years ago, creating the Chicxulub crater off the coast of Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula. This event is widely accepted as the cause of the extinction of the dinosaurs and about 75% of all plant and animal species. The impact released an enormous amount of energy, triggering tsunamis, wildfires, and a global reduction in sunlight due to ejected debris. And that wasn't that, I think that was, when I was growing up, the dinosaurs died, and it was, that was a conspiracy theory, the right. asteroid. Right. And they, and the guy, they found it, I think they around 1980. They found the impact, yeah. And that's under the ocean. And the iridium yeah. matches it. Uh-huh. Yeah. All that is really spectacular stuff. It, it's just like when you look at the moon and you see the craters all over it and realize, okay, this is what happens when you don't have an atmosphere and you also don't have water and you, you can see everything that hits. Like the whole thing. Thank you so much for watching. Please drop a comment below and don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more. See you in the next one.